actor and artist David Cho can recently be seen playing Isaac in the hit Netflix series Beef, but that's not the only reason why you might be hearing his name a lot. Before Cho would portray Danny's volatile older cousin Isaac on Beef, back in 2014, he was involved in some controversy which is resurfacing once again. On a taped podcast at that time which Cho co-hosted alongside Asa Akira, he bragged about forcing oral sex onto a masseuse in LA. And despite his co-host repeatedly calling this conquest rape, he went on and even partially admitted to rapey behavior. When the news started to pick up David's graphic story, he later tried to retract his statement by excusing his podcast as fictional. Either way, it seems many fans of the show Beef are finding it difficult to separate his work as an actor from the scandal in his past. Today we'll talk about David Cho's crazy and questionable past, his rise to fame and much more here for you on Famous Life. David Cho was born on April 2nd, 1976 in Los Angeles, California. Being raised by Korean immigrant parents in LA's Koreatown wasn't exactly an easy experience for David and he believes that his pain originated when he was four years old. At the time, his parents couldn't afford to house him and his two brothers, so David was sent on his own to South Korea for a year to live with his relative. Being as young as he was and seeing as how he didn't even speak the language, David was devastated. And things got worse when he was sexually abused during this period as well. When he returned to LA, art became David's chosen form of therapy. He picked up a spray paint can and began creating murals everywhere around the city when he was a teen. Following a brief stint at the California College of the Arts, David Cho dropped out to focus on creating art for graphic novels while also going on a series of adventures like hitchhiking across the unit. <laughs> Following a brief stint at the California College of the Arts, David Cho dropped out to focus on creating art for graphic novels while also going on a series of adventures like hitchhiking across the United States, working on a kibbutz in Israel, and nearly losing his life while on a quest to find a lost dinosaur egg in the Republic of Congo. In 1996, he self-published his own graphic novel titled Slow Jam, a series he then gave away at Comic-Con in 1998, hoping to interest a potential publisher. The following year, he was awarded a $5,000 grant to self-publish an expanded edition of 1,000 copies. From there, David quietly earned his first First million dollars by gambling in Las Vegas casinos using the money he had earned from selling his work to LA art collectors. At the time, David was an out-of-control gambler whose self-described insane way of life was leading him on the path towards prison or an early grave. Prison wound up coming first. In 2005, David spent two months in a Japanese jail cell for punching a security guard at an art show where he had been presenting his work. Once he was out, he immediately picked up where he left off with his life of excess, sometimes sleeping with several women a day. Then he got rich, really rich. The same year he found himself in a Japanese prison, David was hired by Sean Parker, formerly of Napster, then president of the soon to be inescapable Facebook. Parker wanted David to paint some sexually suggestive murals in the original Silicon Valley Facebook offices. But David wasn't a fan of social media, so he asked for what he thought was a crazy sum of money to do so, $60,000. Parker countered by offering David the same amount in Facebook stock. Seven years later, when Facebook stocks went public in 2012 at $38 a share, David's holdings were worth an epic $200 million. He had become a millionaire 200 times over from a job that was only supposed to pay him $60,000. David Cho became known outside of the art world for the first time after reports began to circulate over how much of a windfall he had inherited from his sweet deal with Facebook. From there, the media descended on him, including interviews with Barbara Walters and Howard Stern. Never one to shy away from his past, David held nothing back during these interviews and spoke openly about his struggles with gambling, sex addiction, and anger, often calling himself a narcissist and a liar. Soon networks like Vice were offering David the chance to appear in front of the camera, and he became an integral part of that brand's transition from print media into the video work it's known for today by conceiving and collaborating on two of the company's most popular series, The Vice Guide to Travel and Thumbs Up. Then in 20 2014, things began to go wrong. During an episode of a podcast he co-hosted with former adult actress Asa Akira, David shocked the world when he described an extremely troubling interaction he once had with a masseuse in which he forced her to perform sexual acts on him. Almost immediately, David's comments were picked up by entertainment blog Exo Jane, which led him to responding with a statement posted to his podcast website, reading in part, If I'm guilty of anything, it's bad storytelling in the style of a douche. The main objective of all my podcasts is to challenge and provoke my friends and the coasters in the show. It's a dark, tasteless
most completely irreverent show where we F with everyone listening, but mostly ourselves. It's not a representation of my reality. I'm sorry if anyone believes the words. It's not a representation of my reality. I'm sorry if anyone believes that the stories were fact. They were not. David's words from that podcast have followed him ever since. In 2017, after being commissioned to paint a large mural on a wall in Manhattan's Lower East Side, an anti-rape protest titled No Means No broke out in response. Following that display, David once more addressed his comments by denying that the extremely detailed story ever really happened, adding that he had been motivated to tell the tale by a morbid curiosity to feel an external response to the internal shame he felt. Apparently, David found it strangely comforting to be so heavily despised because it matched how he felt about himself. As he's grown older, he's entered therapy to work on his issues, admitting to New York Times in 2021, I'm a recovering liar. Instead of being hard on myself and judging myself, I correct myself. Despite all the controversy that surrounded him, David still found himself booking regular work as an entertainer, including his own series on FX and Hulu titled The Cho Show, which was part interview series, part performance arts, and, in keeping with David's personal development, part therapy session too. It ran four episodes before coming to an end. Then he signed up to appear on the Netflix series Beef, which quickly became a massive critical hit, but led to the target on David's back getting bigger. Upon its release in April 2023, Beef would become one of Netflix's most well-received new shows of recent memory, with a formerly 100% fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes that's now fallen to 98%. Once fans who had never heard of David before began looking into his story, they didn't like what they found. One such individual, journalist Aura Bogato, posted a video excerpt from David's podcast to social media to inform those who didn't know already about his checkered past. Once that happened, David sprung to action by filing a copyright claim that got Aura's original post taken down. With 2023 being a whole different social atmosphere than 2014, David isn't having quite as much luck killing the story this time around. While he continues to portray himself as an unreliable narrator and a liar, the resurfaced video has angered many people, and they're refusing to let him off the hook, calling his comments vile and horrific. For his own part, David Cho doesn't appear to be afraid of any possible consequences. Considering Beef is currently doing so well, it's clear why David feels secure, but it's unsure if this controversy will have any effects on him booking future roles. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to Famous Life and leave a comment for who you'd like us to feature next.